Hello and welcome to this video. Manage Kubernetes from Red Hat on AWS and Azure is our topic today. Maybe you remember the good old days when Red Hat was one of the first players in the market with enterprise-ready Kubernetes solutions in local data centers. That's a long time ago. Today, often, there is no need to have this infrastructure in the local data centers anymore. People and companies don't want to manage their infrastructure by themselves. They want to focus on creating business value. They want to focus on application development because the application is the component which brings the benefit to the customers. And this is the reason why you can forget everything you know about the good old OpenShift 3.11 releases. You can forget everything about times when Red Hat Kubernetes was just a self-managed Kubernetes solution for your data center. Red Hat offers a fully managed Kubernetes service on AWS and Azure. Together with Red Hat's strong partners, AWS and Microsoft, they created a first-party service on the marketplaces. No need to worry about self-managing Kubernetes. No need to worry about how to install and operate Kubernetes in the cloud. This joint service from Red Hat and AWS in case of Rosa, Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS, and Red Hat and Azure in case of Aro, Azure Red Hat OpenShift is available directly from the marketplace as every other service from the cloud provider. With Aro and Rosa, you can provision and scale Kubernetes clusters in minutes directly from the AWS or Azure marketplace. Native services from Azure and AWS, of course, are fully integrated in this solution. And in difference to just the Kubernetes runtime, Aero and Rosa are container platforms. You will get cluster services like monitoring, logging, networking, and developer productivity tools by default. You don't have to maintain them separately. And because the managed Kubernetes solutions from Red Hat on AWS and Azure are fully integrated first-party services from the cloud providers, you can use them pay-as-you-go as every other cloud component. You don't have to manage your own contract between your company and Red Hat. All the consumption is included in the unified bill from AWS and Azure, and you will also use your current AWS and Azure commitment while consuming Aero and Rosa. That means Aero and Rosa are the only enterprise-ready way to have a real multi-cloud experience while having all the components integrated in the hyperscalers ecosystem. You'll be able to deploy your applications wherever you want because the application platform is still the same. Let's start with AWS. When you open your AWS marketplace, you will find the search bar. Just type Kubernetes or Rosa into the search bar and you'll find the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS. Just click on Get Started and you will see all the information and prerequisites to install our new cluster. Scroll down, click Continue to Red Hat and you will see the Red Hat Hybrid Cloud Console where you can connect your AWS account with your Red Hat account. After the page redirects you to the setup page for Rosa, this page includes information on how to continue with the cluster installation. For example, how to install the Rosa CLI and the link to the AWS console where you can complete the AWS prerequisites if you haven't done so already. After we downloaded the Rosa CLI and added it to our path, we can start the installation process with Rosa login. After that, we have to create the account roles in AWS. After that, we create a ROSA network, which is mandatory in case we would like to have hosted control planes. In my case, I already created a virtual private network. This is the reason why I get the exception, but in case you will do it the first time, this command will create such a VPC for you.
at the end, we can copy the create command and start the actual installation of the Kubernetes cluster. You will get a few questions about the name and configurations of your cluster, all the fields you can have a look at at the documentation when you're interested in. After you complete all the interactive configuration, the deployment of your fully managed Kubernetes cluster on AWS will start. With the Rosa Logs install command, we are able to observe the progress of the installation and have a look at the log output during the deployment. After our cluster is up and running and the installation process is complete, we can type rosa describe, describe cluster with our cluster name into our terminal and we will get a lot of information to our cluster. In this case, we are just interested in the web console URL property to access our newly deployed cluster. This URL we can copy and paste into our browser window and we'll get to the login page. Here we can use the cluster admin credential to log in our cluster for the first time. After we logged in successfully, we have access to the entire cluster and see the overview dashboard. But as we heard before, we don't want to spend too much time with cluster operations. This is the reason we decided to have a fully managed cluster. We want to focus on application development and deployment and applications are typically deployed with a GitOps approach. For that reason, we will add GitOps capabilities to our Kubernetes cluster by using the operator. In the operator hub, we search for OpenShift GitOps and install the new feature. This operator will bring an Argo CD instance to our cluster and integrate it into our container platform. Now we are able to deploy applications, but we would like to build our applications from scratch from the source code. And to do that, we would like to use Tecton pipelines. Tecton pipelines are integrated in OpenShift pipelines and we can install this feature as an operator from the operator hub as well. After both operators are installed, we can find two updates in our web console which represent the new added features to our container platform. First, we can see a new RVCD button and we also have a new tab in our console, the pipeline tab. The pipeline area is responsible for the build of source code to an artifact and putting the artifact into a container image. And at the end, this container image can be deployed on our container platform. As a next step, Let's have a look at the projects or namespace. We create a new project where we can deploy our application. Let's start with a JBoss application. And you may wonder why JBoss, an application uh, and not a microservice like Quarkus or something similar. The reason is I would like to show you one in one of the next videos how easy it is to modernize such a monolithic application to a Quarkus microservice application. And therefore, we start with the deployment of a JBoss containerized application first. Next, let us use our OpenShift GitOps operator, or better, the Argo CD instance the operator installed for us. The operator also configured the authentication and authorization of Argo CD for us, and we can access the admin password in the workloads secrets area of our cluster. And there in the OpenShift GitOps project, we can find the credentials. We copy the admin password of the Argo CD credentials and navigate to the Argo CD button in the OpenShift web consoles menu. Then we can log in with the previously copied credentials. We can see an empty Argo CD after login 
because we didn't apply any Argo City applications to our Rosa cluster yet. Of course, we can apply any Argo City applications by kubectl or any other known ways to create new Argo City apps. But in this case, I want to show you how easy it is to create a new Argo City app by using the operators interface. Click Create Application in the Operator Configuration and paste your YAML representation of your Argo CD application. In the YAML representation, we can see the name of our application, the namespace where we want to deploy our manifest and the repo URL where we can find the manifests and our source code. In our case, we have a very simple Kubernetes deployment with a deployment service and route definition. After we created the Argo CD application, we can check in Argo CD if our application is available. After the synchronization, the manifests were successfully applied to our managed Kubernetes cluster in the desired namespace. After the synchronization, we can see that all the manifests are healthy, but our JBoss deployment is not. The container is not able to start. The reason is that we didn't build a container image from our source code yet. Let's do exactly that now. Let's build a container image with our Tecton pipeline, which is part of our Argo City application. We start the pipeline and can observe the pipeline logs. In the first step, the pipeline clones our Git repository with the source code for our JBoss application. In the second step, the pipeline compiles the source code and builds a WAR file. And in the last step, the pipeline builds the container image inclusive of the previously built WAR file. In the tab builds image stream, we can see the just built container image and all the details about it. Also, in the Argo City instance, we can observe a change. Now the JBoss container is able to start because the deployment has found the container image now. In the workloads deployments menu of the container platform, we can also monitor the application deployment. In the pods area, we can access the pod directly and have a look into the container logs where we can see the log lines of the JBoss app. And finally, we can also select the routes URL from the networking routes menu of our application. Then we can add our specific path JBoss hello slash rest slash hello to the URL and we get the expected output of our implementation. Hello world. That means we have our application up and running as expected. Now let's summarize what we saw in this video. We created a fully managed Kubernetes container platform in AWS. After that, we installed pipeline and GitOps capabilities. And then we deployed a JBoss application. Everything from scratch in minutes. At the end, we can fully concentrate on our application because the Kubernetes layer inclusive the infrastructure is managed by Red Hat and AWS. And you don't have to worry about any complex cost monitoring or contract maintenance because this first party AWS service is fully built via the marketplace. In the next videos, 
I will show you how easy it is to modernize such a JBoss application and how we can deploy more fully managed Kubernetes clusters in AWS and Azure as well. And then we can schedule all our applications between different clouds easily and without any further effort. So looking forward to seeing you in the next video.